Greetings my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Helix Sleep, the makers of premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your doorstep. Take the Helix Sleep quiz like I did and enter your sleep preferences and your needs. For example, I happen to be a side sleeper, I like a firmer mattress, and I share my bed with my husband. The sleep quiz will take my preferences and needs along with my husband's and come up with a great compromise. We matched with the Helix Sleep Dusk Lux, and we've had our mattress for about a year now, and we're getting terrific sleep. I really like the squishy top, yet our backs remain supported. We're getting great sleep. Our kiddos have Helix Sleep mattresses as well, and they are sleeping very, very well and feel very grown up in their grown up sized beds. Our new Helix Sleep mattress is super comfortable and is such a wonderful upgrade to our last mattress, which we inherited. And while it served us well, it really needed to be replaced. What I also really like besides the comfort of Helix Sleep mattresses is the fact that they arrived rolled up in a cardboard box, super easy to maneuver up narrow set of stairs like we have, and I was able to install the mattress myself. So ordering a mattress online might feel a little bit weird, but Helix Sleep offers a 100 night sleep trial. If you're not happy, they will pick it up and give you a full refund. So there's also flexible payment plans and financing options and free delivery right to your doorstep if you live within the US. So if you'd like to start getting great sleep, please click the link down below or head over to helixsleep.com slash emmymade to see how you can receive up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress along with two free pillows. Big thanks to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video and for their continued support so I can make better videos for all of you. Today I'm going to be making a recipe for Coca-Cola bread that I spotted here on YouTube. A few of you got in touch with me via social media. Thank you so much for sharing the fact that you too also want to see this recipe. I found it on two separate channels here on YouTube and what I found interesting is that they use the same exact recipe and they use the same exact background music as well. So I found the titles of both of these videos a bit clickbaity. It says to just add coke to flour and you'll get beautiful bread. And if you've ever baked bread before, even if you've made a quick bread, you know you need some kind of leavening, whether that be baking powder or yeast to get a beautiful rise. Coca-Cola, yes indeed, has bubbles, but that's not gonna be enough to aerate your bread enough to get it to have a beautiful crumb as illustrated in thumbnails. So at any rate, I clicked on it. What I'm most curious about is whether or not I'll taste the Coke flavor in the bread. The bread recipe itself looks pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and get started. In this large bowl, I've got a bunch of bread flour. You could probably substitute all-purpose flour as well. Bread flour has more gluten in it. It's gonna give you a chewier bread. Gluten is the protein that's in flour, wheat flour. Yeast, this is dry active yeast which is different than instant yeast, but they are convertible. There are little converters they can find online. So if you only have one, you can switch between the two. And then we're going to add some sugar and salt. 250 milliliters. And this is a 222 milliliter can, one of the little tiny mini cans. So I have an extra 28 milliliters of Coke right here. And my extra 28 mils. Sunflower oil. Now we give this a stir. I'm choosing to do this in a mixing bowl and to hand knead this myself, but you could use a stand mixer if you like. Now most bread recipes call for kneading until it is smooth, which usually takes anywhere from three to seven minutes. So depending on your humidity and your environment where you're making your bread, you may have to adjust your bread making a little bit by adding a little less, a little more flour if needed, or a little more Coke. But I think we're finally at the right consistency. So just after a couple minutes of kneading, the 
dough ball is nice and smooth and really easy to manipulate, nice and supple. Same bowl I mixed everything in with a little bit of oil and the top of the dough ball as well, just so it doesn't dry out. I've got a flour sack towel that's really well wrung out. Cover this and we're gonna let this rest in a warm spot for one hour or until the dough has doubled. It's been about an hour and 15 minutes and my bread, or dough I should say, has doubled. Ta -da! Dump this out and we're gonna degas it a bit and we're gonna divide this into six pieces. Stretch, tuck under, stretch, tuck under, like that. Ta -da! Do that for each one of these. I'm gonna keep them covered so that they don't dry out. And now we're going to shape each one of these balls. First, we're gonna just roll this out. And I've never done a six-stranded braid before. I've made a hollow once, which is a lovely bread, but I believe it was a four-stranded braid. If your dough doesn't wanna cooperate and roll out, let it rest for five minutes or so. And we're gonna roll this up into a cylinder. Pinch the seam shut. I've rolled out all the dough and I've stretched them out a little bit and they are about 14 inches long and we're gonna manipulate them in pairs. So at the top, give them a good pinch so they're connected. Take both of these on the outside on the right, move one to the outside and one into the middle here and then re-pair them up like this. Then we're gonna take these two and swing them to the outside and then repair them. Then take this pair and swing them to the middle, this to the outside, pair them up again. And then this goes over in between these, over these two, not a very good description. Over this way and I'm losing my ends here. Tuck everything under, pinch, and then secure underneath the bread. Oh my gosh, so stinking cute. I am so pleased. Okay, now I'm gonna place it on my pan here. Now we're gonna recover this and let it sit for about a half an hour or until this poofs up and doubles in size. And then we're gonna bake it at 307 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes or until the turtle temperature is about 190 degrees. We'll let it cool a bit and then we will taste it. Oh, before we bake it, we wanna beat up an egg and give it a nice good egg wash and that will give us that glorious golden shiny surface. Alrighty, my lovelies, I'll see you in a little bit. Alrighty, my lovelies, here we have it. Bread that has been made with Coke. And I have to say, this is my first time braiding with six strands and I am so pleased. It turned out beautifully, so beautifully. And it's not as hard as you might think. Isn't it gorgeous? Egg wash, I tell you, egg wash makes your bread look beautiful. It's still warm, I know, Technically, you're supposed to let bread cool off before you cut it, but nope, I'm not doing it. I'm gonna, well, it's been out of the oven for about 10 or 15 minutes, but I'm gonna eat it warm because warm bread, because warm bread, yes. Peel the parchment off. That is the bottom, looks gorgeous. There it is, beautiful, squishy, See what it looks like. So it has a slight tan color to it and it's steamy hot. Let's give it a taste. Itadakimasu. Mm hmm. Mmm. Freshly baked bread is so good. So the first thing I have to say, and the whole reason for making this recipe, is to find out whether or not this tastes like Coke. And not to my surprise, it doesn't. I don't taste any Coke whatsoever. It definitely has a slight kind of tan hue to it, but don't taste any Coke whatsoever. In fact, this bread is just very lightly sweetened. It's like sandwich bread. It has that same kind of texture as sandwich bread, 
lightly sweetened, just a little bit of salt in there, and it's delicious. The looks of this bread, in terms of shape, reminds me of challah. So my expectation is that this bread is going to taste like challah bread, and it doesn't. It's not as rich as challah bread, it's not eggy, and it's a little bit more sweet than, say, just a sandwich bread. This bread that I just made with Coke is not. This is much more like sandwich bread. It's delicious, soft, but it is not enriched. So it doesn't have that kind of egginess or richness or extra added sweetness at all. This is purely just for sandwich bread or with cheese or however you would like to have a loaf of hot bread right out of the oven. Mm -hmm. All right, my lovelies, indeed, you can make bread using Coke and it will not taste like Coke, but you can have a novelty of knowing you did put Coke in it. All righty, thanks so much for watching and big thanks to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to get a Helix Sleep mattress for yourself, please click the link down below or head over to helixsleep.com slash emmymade to see how you can receive up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress and two free pillows. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. Mustache and beard, a beard and mustache made out of bread.